a simplified diagram of an AC generator connected to a 25 ohm resistor is shown below. The coil rotates anti-clockwise and then 9.1 says name the component that distinguishes this generator from a AC generator. This is clearly an AC generator and we are even told so. Why are we saying that it's an AC generator? We're saying that it's an AC generator because it has slip rings. Slip rings. If it was a DC generator, it was going to have split rings and not slip rings. So the component uh, that distinguishes this generator from a DC generator is the presence of slip rings uh, instead of split rings and then 9.2 says in which direction will the induced current flow in section xy of the coil choose from x to y or y to x here you have to use uh, the left hand rule right uh, with your left hand you're gonna point using your index finger from the north pole to the south pole because that's how uh, the field most and then if you do that your middle finger will be pointing from y to x right and that's the direction of the induced current so our answer for 9.2 would thus be y to x the diagram below shows the output voltage of the generator for one cycle of rotation of the coil and then there we have it we have uh, the voltage on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis and then 9.3 says define the term rms potential difference we know fully well that's the ac potential difference which dissipates the same amount of energy as an equivalent dc potential difference the ac potential difference which dissipates the same amount of energy as an equivalent dc potential difference and then for 9.4 it says calculate uh, the rms current of the circuit uh, so we know fully well that i rms is equals to v rms divided by r r being the resistance right so we are given the resistance it is said to be 25 uh, ohms uh, but we don't have vrms so now what we actually need to do is calculate vrms first and then we can determine irms so what is the equation for vrms uh, vrms is equals to v max divided by square root of 2 so what is vmax we get our vmax from our graph right it is 100 here it is here uh, where our graph is peaking right the amplitude of our graph basically so we're gonna have vrms being equals to 100 divided by square root of 2 and then that will be some number so now we can substitute uh, this value on our equation of irms right so we're gonna have i rms equals to 10 divided by the square root of 2 uh, divided by r which is the resistance right and it's said to be 25 ohms so irms will be equals to 2.83 ohms and that's how you would calculate it and now we have and 9.5 which says calculate the average power dissipated in the 25 ohm resistor the way you would, would calculate this power is very close to how you calculate power in electric circuits uh, we know that in electric circuits we have the power being equal to i squared multiplied by the r or uh, the power being equal to the voltage squared uh, divided by the resistance the only difference in electrodynamics is that instead of the current uh, just being the current we use irms and instead of the voltage just being the voltage we use vrms so if we 
hey, go ahead and do that we're gonna have power average uh being equals to uh let's use uh irms which we just completed right uh being equals to i rms squared uh multiplied by the resistance so our i rms is 2.83 and then we square it and multiply by uh, 25 uh, that would give you a value of 200.22 watts or joules per second and then uh, you'll be done with that equation and then now let's move ahead to 9.6 9.6 is uh, the speed of rotation of the coil in the generator is now doubled uh, copy the set of axes below in your answer book and sketch the graph of output voltage uh, versus time for 0 0.1 seconds right so okay let's do it like this uh so we're saying that we know that f is equals to the speed multiplied by the wavelength right let's see what happens if the speed is doubled because that's what we are told here that the speed of the rotation is double if you double the speed of rotation uh, you get f equals to 2 multiplied by uh, the speed divided by wavelength so basically you multiply the frequency by 2 when you multiply the frequency by 2 we know that uh, f is equals to 1 divided by uh, the period so when you uh, multiply the frequency by 2 you're basically reducing uh, the period by half right so here in our graph because uh, the frequency and the period are inversely proportional to each other so if uh, frequency goes up 100 percent and then the period will go down 50 percent here in our first case here uh, it took 0 0.1 a second uh, to complete one cycle right so now because we are multiplying uh, the frequency by two or reducing the period by half is going to take 0 0.1 divided by two which is 0 0.05 uh, seconds to complete a cycle so let me just uh, draw the new graph on this same set of axes so that you can see what i'm talking about so here uh, from zero to 0 0.05 uh, it was half a cycle right but now we need a complete cycle because we have increased uh, the speed of the rotation by two so it will be something like this now we have one complete cycle and then now uh we need another cycle from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 right uh, because in our new graph it takes us 0 0.05 seconds to complete a cycle so we're gonna have something like this right and there we have it uh, we have our cycle so the question now becomes what happens if you increase the rotation uh, by 2.5 times you know what happens if you increase the rotation by three times 